lot and uh, played a little harmonica. And I'm looking forward to playing this Friday with Mr. Jimmy at the uh, guitar bar in Asheville, North Carolina. So I've been uh, listening to blues for a long time. I think blues is always probably the core of everything I've always done with music, although I've played other kinds of music. play a lot of country and bluegrass and things like that, too. But it goes back to the blues. And that was the first thing I really learned to play on harmonica. I picked up a harmonica in 1966 and uh, just thought it was a cool instrument. And I'd try to play like, uh, you know, what, like Bob Dylan. It was like, you know, whatever was out there, you know, being kind of a folky, but um, then I stumbled upon a, uh, well, I, I bought a Paul Butterfield record, his first record in 1966, and was kind of knocked out by it, but I didn't understand how he was making those sounds out of a harmonica, because it just didn't seem possible. He had ten little holes, and he had a lot of notes. And anyway, then I, I found a book by Tony Wilson Glover called Blues Harp, and it came in a box with a record, uh, and it had... Uh, a lot of exercises and kind of explain different positions you could play and things like that. But the biggest, biggest value of that book was the uh, uh, the list of records, people to listen to. So he introduced me through that book to Little Walter, Junior Wells, Big Walter Horton, Mama Thornton, Big Mama Thornton, uh, Sonny Cherry, you name all the great harmonica players. And so I went out and bought those records and I listened to them and... Uh, the book didn't help me so much other than kind of directing me where to go, but the rest of it I just kind of figured, figured it out from listening. And I, you know, I went on this in high school. I had put together a little blues band with a guitar player friend of mine and uh, played some, cool, some school gigs and things like that and had a lot of fun. But I was really into it and became very dedicated, really wanted to learn how to play well. And probably the biggest, most exciting experience I had in my early years was in 1968, I went to the Smithsonian. I grew up in Alexandria, Virginia, which is outside of Washington, D.C. And they had the Folk Life Festival at the Smithsonian. And so I went to that. I used to go to that all the time. But I went there and they had Muddy Waters was playing at it. I, I, I talked to his harmonica player at the time, Paul Hosser, and also to his manager, then and Bob Messenger, and said, Look, I play harmonica. I'd like to sit in. And I was 18 years old and I'd been playing a couple of years. I was pretty full of myself, I guess. But I, I convinced them that I could play, and they said, well, look, come with us over to Anacostia. We're playing at a community uh, neighborhood gig for like a benefit for uh, some of the black kids in Anacostia. It's kind of a black section of the town. So I said, yeah, sure. So I rode over with them and uh, got a chance to sit in and play a couple, three numbers. And, uh, you know, my head was like <laughs> totally, uh, totally... Uh, knocked out by the whole experience. And so I went to school up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, had a band up there. We called ourselves the Blue Jukes. And uh, we um, played with, uh, well, played many gigs ourselves around town, but we got a chance to play with Lightning uh, Slim, who was a bluesman out of Louisiana. He was living up in Pontiac, Michigan at the time, and had been kind of off and on still playing. But uh, he was kind of coming back, so we played some gigs in Ann Arbor and then went a little tour with him out to the East Coast. And uh, again, I was just knocked out by the chance to play with these guys like that who were just legends to me at the time. That was in 1973, I think. And I got a chance to play with other guys. I used to go to Chicago a lot. And this is again about 69, 70, 71, 72. And uh, met a lot of the guys, a lot of the blues guys, like. Otis Rush, Magic Sam, uh, Terry Bell, Gene Wells, Buddy Guy, uh, Otis Pan, all those people. And I would um, sometimes get a chance to see them, not so much in Chicago, but if they came to a different town, uh, like in Ann Arbor, I'd get a chance to maybe uh, play with them. Got to be friendly with uh, Terry Bell, who was a really great guy, really friendly guy. And, uh, I uh, actually went and spent uh, about most of the week with him at his house. He invited me over to come and to stay and go to gigs with him. Yeah, Another one of my big experiences with blues, and this wasn't so much as a musician, but as a, a fan and an enthusiast. In Ann Arbor, we had a blues festival. started in 1969, and I was somewhat involved in the beginning of that. There's a picture that we just recently found a copy of and got blown up. It was a little, the green room was actually a trailer in the back of the stage there. And at some point, 
B.B. King was there with Fred McDowell, Big Mama Thornton, Junior Wells, Roosevelt Sykes, Lee Jackson, uh, some other people, all in this little trailer, and I was sitting right next to Roosevelt Sykes, and the picture was all laughing about something. And so that was kind of a, a lot of fun to have this picture of me with all these legendary blues players. But a lot of it is just you know, learning licks. You know, hear this, and then you see, where can that work? And then you find some other licks, and then you improvise. Uh, I draw some songs that I would learn note to note from like Little Walter and solos. And uh, rather than play them note for note, though, I would get them and then I mix them up and try to blend it into some style of my own, do a little bit of Jimmy Cotton style, do a different approach. Walter Horton with that big tone he had, uh, tried to work in some of the things that he was doing. And I like to think whatever I come up with, it was kind of just what it is. And nowadays, I mean, I just got so much stuff in there in my head that I'll hear something and I'll just, you know, play off of that and you know, lead right into something else. So improvisation is something I think, for me, took years of just playing and just doing it to make it come naturally. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned Fred McDowell, actually. He's a guy I played with quite a bit because we had him at the end of a blues festival. And then he would come up to Ann Arbor and play, and we'd put him up. Like, and uh, me or a friend would put him up in our house, and and, and we'd play, you know. <laughs> he, he, he liked his name, Jim. So we get a bo- I get a pick of Jim, we'd pass around and play till 3 or 4 in the morning. This guy could just keep going. I mean, he was, he was an older guy. He was in his 60s then, I guess. But he just liked to play. And then I'd get harmonica, and we'd just play all night. And uh, I played with him a number of times at different gigs, different uh, kind of sitting in. Uh, actually, I come across a picture this night somebody had taken of me playing with him in Ann Arbor with a guy named John Nicholas, who was a guitar player. I, was, I kind of treasured that picture because he, he was a great guy. Kevin John was a wonderful guy. So I went to law school at the University of Texas Law School, and then, long story short, uh, after I graduated, I got a job at a big firm up in New York City called K. Solar. Did that for two years, got tired of being in a big firm, went to work for a smaller firm. I was doing what they call commercial litigation. We had lawsuits, we had people suing people, corporations suing corporations, whatnot. Uh, it was an interesting job. I mean, the law was certainly interesting uh, uh, to me, and I enjoyed it, but I kind of regret that it took me away from music as much as it did, because it's, practicing law is a very full-time job. And between that and having a family, it was kind of hard to make much time for music. My daughter's a, a singer-songwriter, and she's here in Asheville. Oh. Put together a band called the Honeycutters. Uh, she went, changed the name of the band to Amanda Ann Platt and the Honeycutters. Uh, but she's got an excellent band, excellent musician. Yeah, so, and my son, Andrew Platt, is a professional bass player, both stand-up and electric. He plays bass with uh, Christy Cox, who's a bluegrass star out of Nashville. I can't imagine a life without music. Um, Playing it or, or listening to it, and playing it particularly, I can you know, I, I, every day I've got to play a little bit of music or else I just you know <laughs> go a little crazy. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's kind of a lifeblood of, of, of things to me. Mm-hmm. 